From a field of plastic to a field of cardboard, Age of Sigmar now has a card game. Welcome to Hive State. A few months back I received an email talking about Warhammer Champions, a game made both by Games Workshop and PlayFusion, the people who made the wonderful game Lightseekers. In Warhammer Champions, you'll be able to play as one of the four Grand Alliances, choosing four uh, champions to, well, cast spells and lead your units into victory. Now, even though your goal is to reduce your opponent's health to zero, each of your champions have their own quests that they're on. And if you're able to complete all four, you're going to get a powerful blessing that can easily swing the game in your favor, possibly even causing you to win. Now, whenever I first saw the pre-order for this game, I was hesitant for one, one big reason alone, and that was the price tag. However, knowing both companies, I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger, and I'm glad that I did. Now, the Founders Kit came with quite a bit. I was able to get two exclusive playmats, 10 booster packs, although for some reason mine came with 15. Not complaining, but hey, extras. It came with a little deck box, four fully built decks, each with a unique champion under one of the four Grand Alliances. I'll elaborate on that later. It came with a founder plaque and a pin, had four health counters. I didn't expect much for the health counters, but they're actually metal and they're kind of really pretty and they are again representing the Grand Alliances. It also came with a Clash of Champions, which is a little book that has a short story in it, a place to put deck lists, it has a little notebook, and a collection list. So as you collect, you can mark off what you have. Probably not going to do that, but I do plan on maybe using it in other ways. Oh, and an art print. There's also an art print that came with the kit. Now all of this came in a really nice box. and. I ended up doing an unboxing of that, which I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave on the memory card on my camera and just let that rest and let it die. Yeah. yeah. Now, sadly, the Founder Pack is no longer available. However, if you wanted the first four campaign decks, which are pretty much the starter decks, or booster packs, all of that will be in the description below if you're interested. Now, where this is a play fusion game, all of your cards will be scannable and unique. So the decks you play with in real life can be imported into the app and played with online. As of recording this video, the online version is not yet active. However, I would suggest if you have any of the cards whatsoever to go ahead and scan them in the app that is available for a couple reasons. The first being booster cards. Once everything fully launches, these booster cards will give you in-game items and cards or things. So go ahead and feel free to scan the cards on your screen. It'll both help me and you. So take those, please. Now the second reason to go ahead and scan your cards is protection. Where every card is unique and scannable, if someone else scans your card, you no longer own the digital version of that card. So in saying that, if you go ahead and scan your cards, the only way that someone else can scan it is if you unscan your card first. So scan responsibly. So we're going to go ahead and be moving on to the meat of the game. I'm going to go ahead and explain the gist of what the game is and how it's played. But I'm going to start by prefacing this the same way I do my previews. This is not a tutorial. This is just the gist. I've already mentioned that in the game you're going to have four champions while you play, but in your deck you're also going to have three other kinds of cards. You're going to have units, spells, and abilities. Now pretty much any champion can use an ability. They're the type of cards that you play, they do something and then go away, pretty much instance. However, the other two cards, units and spells, they act a bit different. So whenever you play units, these must be played by warrior champions, and whenever you're playing spells, these have to be played by wizard champions. But they don't just play and go away. No, whenever they're played, they will kind of change what they do in a variety of ways as they stay on the board. If you notice the corners of the cards, there will be these little circles with either uh, numbers or an X in it and at the start of every one of your turns, 
your cards are going to start rotating and changing what the cards do, either by an amount or what they do entirely. Some cards will hurt you on your turn and hurt your opponent on others. Some just need to sit out on the field for a few turns before they deal an extreme amount of damage to the opponent. There are so many varieties of things that play off of this rotation mechanic. Now, unlike most games, in Warhammer Champions, you don't draw to start your turn. You have two actions that you can play with during your turn, and for each one you decide to pass, you can draw a card at the end of your turn. See, I actually really like this system over the normal just draw to start. It kind of creates a feeling of... Do I want to play this card and then have less that I can do next turn? Or do I want to go ahead and just skip my turn this turn to end up drawing two cards for the turn, preparing for later? It's the feeling of the more you do, the less you can do. And I really like that. Something else I really like about the game is the health system. Instead of starting with just a specific number, the four champions you use will change your starting health. Some champions will have negative modifiers and some will have positive, but you'll take your total and add and subtract whatever it is and see where your health goes. Now I can't have all positives in this. I will say that whenever I first started looking at the game, there were some things that it, it kind of worried me just a tad, and that's a lot to be based around card limitations. So earlier here I said that you'll be building a deck under one of the four Grand Alliances. Whenever you build, let's say, a Death Alliance um, deck, you can't put any of the other cards in your deck except for Death and Unaligned cards. Now, even though I said that this is something I was not a fan of, after playing a few games, I kind of started to have some second opinions on that. The first thing that made me change my mind is I started thinking, this is not the first game that I've played with this kind of limitations. And the other games, it didn't hinder them pretty much at all. Second, if you're a player who only cares about one of the factions, it creates a great trade pool for you. Did you pull a rare from the destruction faction and you're like, I don't play this, then trade it. Get the rares for the faction you want with the factions you don't. Lastly, and possibly the most convincing reason that it's okay to not be able to mix factions is because not mixing factions is a good thing. Each separate faction feels unique. Whenever I was playing orcs, the way that they started stacking up felt like the way orcs should. Whenever I played chaos, there's cards that let you kill a creature and summon a demon. It's so thematic. And each of the Grand Alliances, they don't feel like a muddled version of the others. They each feel like what they should feel like. Just another thing that changed my opinion easily. I like it quite a lot. All in all, I really don't have any negatives to say about the game. With the few games that I have played, everything felt balanced. I played each of the starters against each of the starters, and everything felt, for the most part, the way it should. Nothing was super overpowered. Now, all in all, I haven't really taken a look at deck building or all of the cards available in the game, but this is just a first impression, so I feel like playing all of the decks against each other will definitely suffice. And as for looking over the other cards and going in possibly obsessive detail, we'll get there. I also love the fact that even if you don't have a local community for this game whatsoever, there can be no one within a hundred miles of you that plays this, and you can still buy a starter deck or booster packs, build your deck, and play with people. And to me, that's a huge selling point for this. And I think it's the way a lot of card games should end up going. So if you're interested, like I said, all the links for this game to purchase will be in the description. If you would like to see more Warhammer Champions content of any kind, really, please let me know down in the comments or anywhere you can find me. I'm debating on doing a box opening if that's something anyone would be interested in. Otherwise, if you'd like to stay up to date, go ahead and subscribe to whatever you feel, but whether you do or whether you don't, you will see me when you see me. Oh, final note, here are the booster cards again for anyone who wants them but didn't scan them earlier on in the video. That way you don't have to go search them out or anything like that. So, yeah. Uh, bye now. <laughs>